Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone, and welcome to our webinar on the MKE STIG. Today, we're going to cover everything you need to know about securing your multi-mode container orchestration with Adesa STIG. I'm going to begin with a little introduction about myself before moving on to Marantis Kubernetes Engine, aka MKE, and the importance of STIGs. Then we'll delve into specifics of the MKE STIG, including what it covers, its controls, and its application across various industries. Finally, I'll do a little bit of a demo on uh, how the STIG actually looks. So let's get started. Kubernetes is constantly evolving, and keeping platforms and applications secure can be a challenge. Our Kubernetes Enterprise Security Checklist identifies critical threats developers and platform engineers should be aware of and suggests mitigations to reduce risk. Download now at marantis.com slash checklist. My name is William Conitzer. I'm delighted to be your presenter today. Since joining Marantis in 2018, I've taken on several roles, currently serving as a solutions architect. In this role, I engage with enterprise clients to enhance their IT infrastructures using key technologies like OpenStack and AWS. I focus on developing customized solutions, conducting technical workshops, which allows me to build strong advisory relationships with key stakeholders. Marantis Kubernetes Engine. MKE is a powerful container orchestration platform that empowers you to manage Kubernetes and Swarm workloads seamlessly within a single platform. This not only simplifies operations, but also unlocks a world of possibilities for multi-mode container deployments. However, security is paramount in today's containerized world. That's where security technical implementation guides, aka STIGs, come in. STIGs provide a standardized approach to securing systems, ensuring they comply with industry best practices and regulatory environments. The MKE STIG specifically addresses the unique security needs of multi-mode container orchestration environments, leveraging the strength of both Kubernetes and Swarm to deliver a highly secure platform. So what does the MKE STIG cover? The STIG provides comprehensive coverage for various components within an MKE environment, including the underlying container orchestration engines like Kubernetes and Swarm. It dives deep into securing these elements, addressing specific aspects of both Swarm and Kubernetes within a multi-mode context. One important aspect to mention up front is that while the MKE STIG secures the MKE environment, it does not cover the operating system or the container runtime engine except where needed. Those specific aspects, the operating system and the container runtime, are covered in much more detail by separate STIGs specific to those components. So STIG scope and applicability. Uh, let's briefly touch on what a security technical implementation guide or STIGs are and their overall purpose. STIGs provide a standardized mythology for securing different components in IT environments. They're crucial for maintaining robust security standards across various platforms. In our discussion today, we focus on multimodal environments. These are setups where multiple orchestrators coexist, such as Kubernetes and Swarm. These environments add complexity and diversity, which makes standardized security guidelines even more essential. The MKE STIG addresses security requirements across these different orchestrators within the same environment. It ensures that not only Kubernetes clusters are secured, but also Swarm clusters. This comprehensive approach simplifies security management across diverse setups. One of the significant advantages of the MKE STIG is that it provides a unified framework for securing all components in a multimodal environment. This means we have a single set of security guidelines that apply across different orchestrators, which reduces complexity, complexity sorry, and ensures consistency in our security posture. So when we talk about STIG controls, we're referring to specific security requirements designed to protect complex environments. STIGs are essentially recipes for securing various components developed through a collaborative process involving the U.S. Department of Defense, the DOD, the Defense Information Systems Agency, DESA, and the National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST. This collaboration ensures that firm standards and expectations are set for data protection and system security. The STIGs provide detailed guidance on how to configure particular versions of specific products like Marantis Kubernetes Engine to meet the stringent security requirements they've set. They offer a structured approach to securing technology leaving no room for black boxes or proprietary secrets. Now let's delve into specific controls that the MKE STIG covers. 
First up, we have the Access Control, or AC. This ensures that only authorized users can access system resources, and it includes measures for user authentication and authorization. Audit and Accountability, the AU Control. This tracks and logs user and system activities and ensures actions can be traced to hold individuals accountable. Configuration Management, or the CM Control. This maintains secure configurations for all system components, provides guidelines for setting secure defaults and performing regular configuration audits. Patch Management. This ensures all components are kept up to date with the latest security patches and protects against known vulnerabilities. Logging and monitoring. This keeps comprehensive logs, system activities, and enables continuous monitoring to detect and respond to security incidents promptly. Data protection or the DP control. This secures data at rest and in transit using encryption. It implements access restrictions to protect sensitive information. Now, by implementing all these controls, the MKE STIG ensures a holistic security posture for both Kubernetes and Swarm environments. Now, each control within the MKE STIG plays a critical role in maintaining the overall security and integrity of the environment. The access control measures prevent unauthorized users from accessing sensitive data and systems. Network security controls protect against various network-based threats, ensuring secure communication channels. The configuration management ensures all components are configured securely, reducing the risk of vulnerabilities due to misconfigurations. Regular patch management ensures that all systems are protected against known security exploits. Comprehensive logging and monitoring enable rapid detection and response to security incidents, minimizing potential damage. And data protection measures such as encryption ensure that sensitive information is safeguarded from breaches. Having these controls in place is crucial for any organization looking to maintain a secure environment. They help not only in complying with the regulatory requirements, but also in safeguarding against evolving security threats. Moreover, a current STIG indicates a product like MKE has undergone rigorous testing and documentation, reflecting a high level of vendor technical expertise and commitment. It demonstrates the vendor's ability to partner effectively with customers to meet additional security requirements and achieve broader compliance goals, such as FedRAMP authorization. Now, STIGs are primarily designed to meet the stringent security requirements set by the Department of Defense and the National Institutes of Standards and Technology. However, their applicability extends far beyond these organizations. So why would other sectors be interested in STIGs? While STIGs are created to secure DOD systems, the principles and controls they encompass are universally relevant. The rigorous standards set by the DOD and NIST can serve as a strong foundation for security practices in various industries. Many industries adopt STIG controls as a best practice because they ensure a high level of security. For example, the financial sector, healthcare industry, and even educational institutions often look to STIGs for guidance on securing their systems and data. The thoroughness of STIGs makes them an excellent resource for any organization looking to bolster its security posture. They cover a wide range of security aspects, from access control and data protection to configuration management and incident response. Now let's discuss how STIG controls can be effectively applied in various regulatory environments and what the benefits might be. So first up, let's talk about the financial sector. Banks and financial institutions handle highly sensitive data and are subject to strict regulatory requirements like the Payment Card Industry Data Security Standard, PCI DSS, and the Graham Leach Biley Act, GLBA. So the access control part, implementing STIG controls on access management ensures only authorized personnel can access critical financial data. Audit and accountability. The STIG guidelines on logging and monitoring can help financial institutions maintain robust audit trails, which are essential for regulatory compliance and fraud detection. Now let's take a look at the healthcare sector. Healthcare organizations must comply with regulations like the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, HIPAA, to protect patient data. So data protection. STIG controls provide detailed instructions on encrypting data at rest and in transit, which is crucial for protecting patient information. Configuration management. Ensuring all the systems are securely configured help prevents breaches and ensures compliance with HIPAA's stringent requirements. Public sector. Government agencies, apart from the obvious DOD, also benefit from adopting STIGs to meet various federal regulations. Incident response, for example. STIG controls related to incident response can help agencies quickly detect 
and mitigate security incidents, ensuring continuity of operations. System integrity. Applying the stick controls ensures that government systems maintain integrity and are protected against tampering and unauthorized changes. Another one, the retail sector. Retails must secure payment systems and customer data to comply with PCI, DSS, and other regulations. So for example, patch management. Stick guidelines on regular patching help protect retail systems from vulnerabilities that could be exploited by cyber criminals. Network security. By implementing the stick controls for network security, they can ensure secure transactions and protect customer data from breaches. And one last example, the education sector. Educational institutions, which handle both student information and research data, can enhance their security posture by adopting STIG controls. For example, identification and authentication. By ensuring strong authentication mechanisms, this helps protect student data and intellectual property. System and communication protection. The STIG controls help secure communications and data transfers within and between institutions. So we can see by adopting STIG controls, organizations across these sectors can not only enhance their security, but can also ensure compliance with relevant regulatory requirements. This leads to a more secure and trusted environment for their operations, safeguarding both data and reputation. One of the key strengths of the MK STIG is its ability to integrate seamlessly with existing security frameworks and tools. The MK STIG is designed to work alongside other well-established security frameworks, such as NIST 800-53, ISO 27001, and CIS controls. This ensures that organizations can maintain a unified security posture without having to overhaul their existing systems. The STIG can be implemented using a variety of security tools and platforms. This includes integrating with security information and event management systems, SIEM, vulnerability management tools, and other cybersecurity solutions. This compatibility allows organizations to leverage their current security investments while enhancing their overall security with the MKE STIG. Now, by integrating with other frameworks, the MKE STIG ensures a comprehensive security approach that covers all aspects of an organization's IT infrastructure from container orchestration to broader IT systems. How does the MK STIG integrate with these other security frameworks and tools? Well, framework alignment starters. The MK STIG aligns its controls with the requirements and best practices of other security frameworks. For instance, it incorporates guidelines that match NIST cybersecurity framework, ensuring that organizations can easily map their compliance efforts across multiple standards. Tool integration. It supports integration with various tools like Docker Bench for security, Kubernetes Bench for security, and OpenSCAP. These tools help automate the process of applying and auditing stick controls, making it easier to ensure continuous compliance. Unified security posture. The integration capabilities of the MKE stick help create a unified security posture, where policies and controls are consistently applied and monitored across different parts of the IT environment. Now, maintaining compliance is not a one-time effort, but an ongoing process. The MKE STIG provides the necessary framework to ensure continuous compliance with security standards. The STIG encourages regular audits and assessments to ensure that security controls remain effective and up-to-date. This proactive approach helps identify and mitigate risks before they can be exploited. Utilizing automated tools for continuous monitoring and compliance Checks can be streamlined, and tools like the Open Policy Agent can enforce compliant policies in real time, ensuring that deviations are detected and corrected immediately. It also has scope for ongoing trainers and awareness, ensuring that IT staff and security personnel are continuously trained on the latest security practice and STIG updates. This helps maintain a high level of security awareness and readiness to address emerging threats. Now, implementing continuous monitoring solutions, you can implement continuous monitoring solutions that track compliance with stick controls in real time. This allows for immediate detection and remediation of any non-compliant configurations or activities. Um, policy enforcement, we can leverage tools that can enforce security policies automatically 
ensuring that any changes to the environment comply with the established SIG controls. And we can conduct periodic reviews and updates to the security policies and controls to align with the latest SIG versions and other evolving security standards. Now, looking ahead, there are several exciting developments in the pipeline, specifically for the MKE SIG. We're planning to provide an option to automate the SIG controls with Mirantis software installation. This will make it significantly easier for organizations to implement and manage SIG controls, ensuring compliance with minimal manual intervention, which will be a significant uh, improvement to the user experience. We're also working on a new version of Mirantis Kubernetes engine called MKE4, which is fully redesigned to be very flexible and composable, providing faster time to value. Once MKE4 is available, we plan to go through the SIG certification process to ensure it meets the same high standards of security and compliance as the current version of MKE. By staying informed about these future developments, organizations can better prepare for upcoming changes and continue to enhance their security posture using the latest advancements in the MKE stick. That's been a lot of talking for me. Now I'm just going to reset my screen and um, show you what the SIG looks like and how you can apply the, the various controls. Right, so I've got a couple of windows open here on my screen, uh, a browser, a terminal window into a server, and uh, a Windows machine to show the SIG viewer. So the SIG viewer only currently runs under Windows, uh, but you can run it in a virtual machine like I'm doing. Open it up. This is the SIG viewer. So this is the software they provide, and you'll download the stick controls. So I have it downloaded here. We load it in. You can see it provides a nice interface where you can see all the different uh, controls and information about them in one place. There's some PDFs at the top that provide some overall information about the stick itself. And then we have the actual uh, security controls listed down here. So let's just take a look at the first one. It's got a group ID, a rule ID, uh, classification and the severity. It gives you a description, a discussion, and some very explicit instructions on what you need to run to check the control, and then information, what you need to do to fix it. So if we look at this control, it's talking about the lifetime minutes uh, of a login session on MKE. It gives you a little bit of description about it, so lifetime minutes, and renewal threshold, logging control, part of the security features that help manage user sessions. So it's very explicit. Setting these controls is essential. It tells you why you need to do it, how to do it. So if we then look at the check text here, it says log in to the MKE web UI, navigate to admin, admin settings, authentication authorization, and have a look to see if this is set correctly. If they're not, it gives you instructions below on how to fix it. So let's take a quick look at my demo system, see how it's set up. So we'll have a quick look. It says admin, admin settings, authentication, authorization. So here we go, admin, admin settings, authentication, and authorization. So we brought up that section. Next, it says ensure lifetime minutes set to 10 and renewal threshold minutes is set to zero. So we've got lifetime minutes, that's correctly set to 10. And the renewal threshold minutes, uh, if there's nothing there and it's blank, that means it's set to zero. If it was set to something else like five, all you need to do is come in, change it to zero, you go down here and click save. And there you are. You just successfully applied the first stick control on this list. Pretty simple. Let's have a look at the next one. This one says, in an MSR organization, user permissions and repositories must be configured. If I look down here at the checks text, it says, if MSR is not being utilized, this is not applicable. MSR is the Mirantis uh, Secure Registry component. I'm not using that on my system, so I can just ignore this one. and We go on to the next one. Let's have a look at this one. User managed resources must be created in a dedicated namespace. So let's see what this check is telling us to do. This check only applies when using Kubernetes orchestration. That's fine. My system is not set up to use Swarm. I'm just using Kubernetes. So I log into the web UI. I navigate to Kubernetes namespaces. Okay. Kubernetes namespaces. So 
it says in the top right corner is set context rule name spaces is not enabled. This is a finding. So let's have a look. Top right corner. Yep, we have it set. It's good. Navigate to Kubernetes services. Confirm that no service except Kubernetes has a default namespace listed. Confirm that only approved system services have the cube system namespace listed. Okay, so we're going to go to Kubernetes and services. And we're looking at what's in the default namespace. So just Kubernetes. Oh, we've got something called the metric server running there. So that might be an issue. So let's see what it says. If default has a service other than Kubernetes service, this is a finding. If the cube system has a service that's not listed in the system security plan, SSP, this is a finding. So let's take a look. So these services that are running in the cube system, these are all critical to how MKE runs. So you'd have those listed in your system security plan being valid. Now, if you find something that's not valid, what does it say to do? Go in, enable context rule namespaces. We've done this. Move any user managed resources from the default cube public and cube node to user namespaces. Okay. So we go to Kubernetes, so select the user managed service, click into it, have a look. Boom. There we go. The little settings tab. We can go in here, go down, find where and apply a namespace to it. So you need to add up here in the API uh, under metadata a namespace. I'm not going to do this today because uh, it's a service that's running that we're testing, uh, and I don't want to inadvertently break somebody else's work that they're doing. But you can see, essentially, the instructions are pretty explicit, pretty easy to follow, uh, and provide detailed instructions on how to check it and how to resolve it. Now, we won't go through all of them, but you can see they're all pretty simple to run. I'll do this one last one uh, because this actually involves logging in uh, to the node itself. So it says least privileged access and need to know must be uh, required to access MKE runtime and instantiate container ridges. So this one involves you uh, to log into the, the node itself. It says log on, execute the following commands. So let me see if I can just copy that straight in. So there's no output present, so it's set up correctly. Then it says to check the, the verified users, so let's check that quickly. Docker. So we only have one user that's expected, the Docker user. The final check is to check the permissions on the socket. And it's set as it should be there as 660. Now, if none of them were set correctly, you go down and you see it's got specific text on how to update the various settings. Now, if we have a look, these are all taking a few minutes at most to apply and go through. It's pretty simple. And if we look, it says there's only 44 rules. So within an hour or so, you could run through all of this and secure your system. Sort of coming to the end, I've done a lot of talking. But let's just wrap up sort of what we've covered today. So we've covered a lot of ground, I hope, talking about the MKE STIG. We did an introduction where I covered what the MKE STIG is, its importance and its importance in securing multi-orchestrator environments, its scope and applicability. We covered all the comprehensive coverage of the MKE STIG, including its application in multimodal environments in various industries. The anatomy of a STIG, where we broke down the specific controls covered by the MKE STIG, emphasizing their critical role in maintaining a secure environment. We examined how STIG controls can be applied beyond DOD and NIST to meet the regulatory requirements of different sectors like finance and healthcare. We discussed the integration of the MKE STIG with existing security frameworks and tools and the importance of ensuring ongoing compliance. And we also looked ahead exciting new features, including the development of MKE4 and plans for future STIG certification. What to do next? To leverage the full potential of the MKE STIG and ensure your environment is secure and compliant, I would suggest you start by integrating the STIG controls we discussed in 
to your existing security practices. Uh, use the guidelines provided to enhance your overall security posture. Uh, adopt continuous monitoring solutions to maintain compliance and promptly address any security issues. And also keep an eye on future developments such as the release of MP4 and new stick features to stay ahead in securing your infrastructure. I also encourage you to explore the MKE stick further. Please feel free to visit our website for more detailed information on the MK stick and how it can benefit your organization. Just go to www.barantis.com. Um, and feel free also to reach out to us for personalized guidance and support. If you're trying to implement this and you're stuck, just please open a support ticket with us. Our team is here ready to assist you in implementing the stick controls and ensuring or environments meet the highest security standards. Uh, I'd just like to point out, we do also have some upcoming webinars that I highly recommend people come and have a uh, attend. We've got Troubleshoot Kubernetes the easy way with generative AI and machine learning for automated uh, root cause analysis. That's happening on July 23rd at 9 a.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern, uh, 6 p.m. Central European time. And we've also got an OpenStack demo of a new feature we've developed to dynamically optimize cost and performance. That's happening on July 25th, again at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Central European. Thank you very much for attending today. Have a great rest of your day.